So we're going to look now about how you would set a potential transplant recipient up as a living donor recipient and how you can then link potential donors to that recipient. So you can see here we've got a patient record. The patient already has in the transplant status management component a referral, which is active. Um, and the first thing we're going to do is just set this recipient up as a potential living donor recipient. So if a donor's come forward, we scroll down to the living donor logistics section um, within transplant speciality view. And currently it says that there are no live donors here. Okay. If we scroll down to form launch on the left hand side, and then click the little downward arrow to the right hand side of the form launch, we can click on Living Donor Logistics, which then brings up the Living Donor Referral Form. And we set this patient up as a potential Living Donor Recipient to tell the system that there may be some donors available for this patient. We don't need to complete anything else at this stage. Just click the green arrow at the top left hand side and refresh the patient's view. So now our recipient's set up, we need to go into the donor record in order to be able to document potential donors. So the first thing we're going to do here is visit our donor record. So if I just type in the MRN. Okay, so we're going to set this dummy patient up as a potential donor. So again, we're going to the transplant speciality view. And under the living donor logistics section, we're going to select new living donor form. Once we've pulled this up, we can click to now select this patient as a potential donor rather than a recipient. And that will pull up the form that allows us to enter all the donor details. So we can put in the referral rate. This donor, for example, could be living related, could be a parent. Then we enter the MRN of our potential recipient. And it's important that you get this right because it's this field, the MRN of the potential recipient, which creates the link between donor and recipient. Add some more information about compatibility. Um, the process that the patient is in and then click to return to the original form and then the green arrow saves it. Once we've done that, if we click refresh, we should hopefully now see under the living donor logistics section for our donor that we now have a relationship created between our donor and the recipient that we set up earlier on. And you can see that this is the potential recipient details, all the information we've just put in our form appears here. The tissue typing data here can be added by the tissue typing laboratory later on, um, and we'll show you the mismatch and the cross-match results for that donor and that recipient. One thing this does allow us to do is if we click on the recipient MRN here, you can see it's our hyperlink. And if you click on it, it will take you directly to our potential recipient's medical record. Again, in the transplant speciality view for the recipient. And a living donor logistics will now see that that donor is listed. And you can do that as many times as you need. So if there are extra donors, you go into the donor medical record, complete the logistics form, and it will list all of the potential donors for this recipient under this section in the form here. Once the link between donor and recipient has been created, we can now start to document the workup process for our potential donor. As we work our way through the workup process, we can edit that transplant logistic form that we created in the last step. Um, and if we click through learning living donor logistics, as the patient makes their way through the workup phase, for example, the next step would be medical and surgical assessment. We can update this form 
um, and if they're on hold or in the paired exchange we can document that and if they become unsuitable we can also document that on this form. Eventually when a donor has been improved, approved to donate we can enter the date in here and as we work our way through that information this will update the status for both the donor and recipient in the living donor logistics so you can see at a glance what stage each of your donors is at. So now we're at the medical and surgical assessment phase. The next thing that happens to a potential donor is they will come to a medical and surgical assessment clinic um, and we can document the uh, clinic attendance in the donor assessment power form. To get to that we go to form launch on the left hand side, click the downward arrow and under here you will see a form called living donor assessment or live donor assessment. If we click on this we get here a, a, a complex power form with a number of different tabs on the left hand side which allows to document the donor's medical history and all of the referral details and this is designed to be used by all members of the MDT including the nephrologist and the surgeon so there's one form and various people can come in and enter uh, this Uh, this form. So you can enter the staff that have seen the patient, relationship between patient and donor. Uh, recipient information you see will automatically have pulled through from the referral power form and the attended recipients already documented there. We can document medical history including previous diagnoses and problems as you usually would with an EPR surgical history including previous operative procedures again as you would in EPR and anaesthetic complications. There's an entire form for anaesthetic assessment including various general anaesthetic issues, previous blood transfusions and so on. Medications and allergies use the normal components within EPR so you again you would document the medication by history um, and add any home medications in here. And the same goes with allergies. If there are no known medication allergies, you can document that. Family history, again, uses the standard EPR components for family history and social history, where you can record smoking and alcohol use, employment, and so on. Physical examination. All of the physical examination components will also populate the flow sheet. So if you enter a blood pressure in here, it'll appear in the patient's flow sheet. And the height, weight, and BMI will also populate the flow sheet too. Um, and then there's checklists for both the nephrologist um, to fill out and the surgeon seeing the patient in clinic. One of the advantages of using a joint form like this is that once one of the medical team has completed this form, be it the nurse, the nephrologist or the surgeon, the others can review that information but it doesn't have to be documented twice. It'll stay there and repopulate the form the next time it's launched. One important thing to remember is that only one person should use this form at a time. So ideally this form should always be used with the uh, patient's medical record open um, and by the person who's seeing the patient at that time to prevent any overwriting of data. You can then document the investigations required and when they've been completed. There's a checklist here. And then for clinic three, um, there's a tab for surgical consent and then the final checklist uh, pre-donation for the week prior to donation for the living donor nurses to complete. So this is a multi-use form and you complete this form as we work our way through. It's a required field in there. Um, and once the form's been saved, if you need to get back to it, you do that through the form launch component. So you'll see once you've saved and refreshed, If we go back to the form launch component, you can see your living donor assessment form is here and you can simply click on it and then click the modify button for somebody else or at another appointment for you to bring that assessment back up and to review the contents and adjust the contents of the power form as needed.
Once the patient's been through their medical and surgical assessments, um, the next thing they may do is either go to the AIT or the living donor x-ray MDTs. And the outcomes of both of those MDTs have power forms to record them. So again, in the form launch component in your donor medical record, you can select your AIT MDT. That will pull up a power form. It'll tell you how many previous meetings they've been to, what the date of the meeting is. You can document who is at the meeting. Um, and again, you can go through and document everybody that was present at that meeting and what their role is. So then as you scroll down, you can see what the outcome of that MDT was. So in this case, we might say um, the patient should go into the paired exchange. We can list the criteria, but also if they're going to go through um, uh, desensitization, you can document the details that have been discussed in the AIT meeting, document any comments underneath, and then save the form so you can see there's a required film there um, so if i document that and click save again once we've done that the form will appear in the form launch component and you can go back and review that form whenever you like if you want to see the contents of that form these forms are designed as such you would make a new form for each mdt meeting the patients discuss that The same goes with the living donor sign-off MDT, so the X-ray MDT, it's the living donor MDT review, and again, you can document the staff present, that the history was documented, uh, any imaging that was discussed, GFR, and whether there are any issues. Okay, and the outcome of the meeting is recorded, so if you say that they are fit to donate, it will ask you which side, or whether further discussion is required, whether there are any special considerations, for example, do we need an ITU or a Coru bed? Do, um, or any specific requirements? If the patient's not fit, you can document the reason why. Um, and again, once that form is saved, uh, you have to make sure you fill out all the mandatory fields. Once that form is saved, it'll appear in the patient's form browser and you can review that at any point. All of these forms will also appear under PowerNote view as you're used to seeing documents. You can see all those forms that we've just completed appear in the patient's medical flow with a summary um, easily visible here. And you can get back into the original form just by double clicking.